In the summer of 1864, a team of five explorers became the first white men to enter the High Sierras, in the region we know today as Kings Canyon and Sequoia National Parks. Their goal, as part of the Whitney survey, was to explore the Sierra Nevada and document their discoveries. Their journals capture in precise detail not only the route taken, but also their personal experiences of being the first people to enjoy the rugged beauty of these mountains. Little did they know how their expedition would unlock a great secret held by the mountains for millions of years, a jewel in the crown of the Sierras. So join us, following in the footsteps taken by William Brewer and his fellow explorers. We want to follow their route and some of the same peaks to relive their experiences. And above all, we want to retell a little known story about five audacious American pioneers. Look at this peak here. There's no doubt. If we can summit this, this would be the hardest peak we have ever climbed. It's time to hit the trail, Elvis. Yeah. 48 pounds. 48 pounds. 10 day exciting adventure. Yeah. With the taxi service. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you so much. Sure. <laughs> So here we are, August the 26th, 2022, in Big Meadows in uh, Sequoia National Park. Uh, but actually also, it is uh, June the 22nd of 1864. We are standing on the same point where five intrepid explorers uh, stood 158 years ago as they were about to undertake an amazing hike into the High Sierras of Sequoia and Kings Canyon. They were the first explorers of this area awesome so let's go do it let's do it well i'm sure this wasn't here in 1864. <laughs> in 1860 josiah whitney was appointed as california state geologist with the following charter with the aid of appointed assistants create an accurate and complete geological survey of the state and publish a report including maps and diagrams with full scientific description of the rocks, fossils, soils and minerals. In practice, the legislature was more interested in the discovery of minerals to replace the dwindling gold rush. Whitney, however, interpreted his remit with a much broader vision and hired a diverse team of cartographers, botanists, geologists, as well as mineralogists. To lead the field expeditions, he hired William Brewer from Yale University and together they assembled a fine team of scientists. For the first three years, the Whitney survey traveled thousands of miles, crisscrossing the state, creating maps and documenting every detail, including gold, silver, and quicksilver mines. Having explored Yosemite and the Northern Sierras up to Lake Tahoe in 1863, the plan for 1864 was to tackle the more rugged and unexplored High Sierras to the south. So in early summer, 1864, William Brewer and his team of four others set off from San Jose and rode on their horses and mules across Pacheco Pass, uh, across the Fresno over a few days and then up into the mountains to uh, spend a few days at Horse Corral and then Big Meadows where we are today before setting off into the complete unknown. The temperature is just right. It's perfect isn't it? 75 yeah. yeah, that's what I love about being up here at uh, seven or 8,000 feet. Our goal is to follow the route that Brewer and his team took across the Southern Sierras and uh, compare what life must have been like in 1864 versus our trek today in, in modern times. There were no maps, no trails, no one pretty much had been into the high sierras of what we now call Sequoia and Kings Canyon. There was no reason to come into the mountains. They were kind of just in the way. So Brewer's initial challenge was how to successfully discover a safe path through the mountains. How do you plan a route without getting lost or stuck in impassable terrain and without Google Earth to guide you? So Elvis, how's it going? Moving this 200 pounds by the year up this man. <laughs> well, without a path, hiking through here, you know, all you'd have is a compass and a ge basic general direction. You could get horribly confused as to where you were going. No maps, no GPS. All our intrepid explorers had was past experience of 
hiking where no one had hiked before. Crossing this terrain without a path was indeed challenging. We divided the baggage between all the animals and walked, for the way was terrible. At times it lay over and along the ridge, in forests of firs and pines, and then over rocky hills and up steep slopes, so steep that our animals could hardly cling to them. Remember last time we tried to cut that little corner to the Marie Lake? Yes. Yes, and our navigation was all we over were, the place. We were massively confused. <laughs> Looking at our GPS. Yes, it took. GPS! We already had the GPS! And even with that, we still ended up on the wrong ridge. How are we going, Mr. Navigator? We're already halfway there. Wow! Yeah. That's good. Seems like we've only just got started. Hey, here's our first vista, Elvis. Look over to the left. Oh, yeah. See our first range of mountains through the trees. We're nearly to the top of this ridge. Doing pretty well for a first day, straight out of the car. Along the crest, 25 miles east, are rugged snow-covered peaks we hope to explore. The western slope is rough in the extreme, and both the topography and aspect are unlike anything I've ever seen. The region is so very rough, I'm filled with anxiety of us achieving our goal. All right, we're entering the Jenny Lakes wilderness. And what does it say at the bottom here? Mountains are calling, and I must go. Elfa said that. <laughs> I think you've plagiarized that from Mr. Muir, <laughs> John Muir. <laughs> I thought you say this, this would be a zoo. I thought it could be seen here. I thought the Jenny Lakes was quite popular. I mean, it's kind of just like when Brewer and Co. came up here, not a single person around. So I wonder if this gully here is perhaps the creek. Yeah, I think it's the... Oh, well, this has some bad news for you. No campfires. Close to motor vehicles, hang gliders and bicycles. Oh okay. no! We're going to go up the trail here and see if there's some spot to pitch a tent. It's close to the creek. So we've had dinner on the rock. We have our tent set up a little precariously here, but we have a bag, rope up on the tree, and we Ate our sandwiches. I think everything else is about set. So it's our first morning out in the mountains. Just had breakfast of oatmeal and uh, we're now getting ready to pack up our camp and, and start following the trail of these five great explorers from 1864. So it's now I think June the 28th of 1864. The reason why we started at Big Meadows was they uh, traveled across the Central Valley and up to Big Meadows and hung out there for about, uh, I think about a week. There was quite a lot of activity down there. There were people cutting trees down. There was a friendly encampment of Indians. One of the explorers has an amazing account of a funeral procession for the, for the wife of the Indian chief. Uh, and they were collecting provisions because they knew they were going to be out in the wilderness for, for, for a long time. They got all their gear together, did some reconnoitering by climbing some of the adjacent hills and then um, from big meadows they really set, a, set out into the unknown. So this seemed like an obvious place for us to start our following the footsteps because this is the point at which they're really leaving civilization behind and, 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 and completely heading off into the, into, the, into the unknown wilderness. So yesterday we came down from big meadows which is kind of over this over this lump and, and down down well, down in that area where there was some form of civilization. We have the luxury of a trail to follow, which they didn't, <laughs> they didn't have. And, and behind us here, which is hard to see with the sun, this, this peak here is called Shell Mountain. And they walked anti-clockwise round this mountain down to a mountain range called the King's Kern Divide. The King's Kern Divide is basically where all the rain on the eastern side flows into the King's River, all the, all the rain on the, on the western side flows into the Kauia. Um, and so our goal today is to walk around the Shell Mountain to a place called Jenny Lakes, which is close to where they, where they camped. So it's 9.45, we're all set. I'm sure it didn't take Brewer this long to get ready in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you sure? <laughs> all these animals? Yeah. Horses and mules, or maybe it did take him longer. Jenny Lakes Wilderness, 
Sequoia National Forest. Bigger picture. Working our way around Shell Mountain. In Big Meadows, they had stocked up on food supplies. I went to a hunter's camp and got 40 pounds of dried venison and bear meat and then went on a hunt with him. He shot one deer, added to the three others he'd shot previously. He gave me the meat of two of them and packed them out where we could pick them up later. And no mosquitoes. Yay. Hey Richard, uh, I want to know a little bit more about Brewer's team. In his team at this at this time, there was five of them. There was there was Brewer himself, Clarence King, and John Gardiner, who Brewer had met on a ferry boat uh, to Sacramento about nine months earlier. There's a cartographer, a German, Charles Hoffman, who really brought the art of map making to to the Sierras. And then lastly, prior to Big Meadows, they ran into a, an 18 year old called Dick Cotter. Yeah. who begged to uh, come along and they said well if you can be our our lackey and uh, help with you know all the uh, visions and everything then you're welcome to come join us we think here we're probably close to the top of what's called poop out pass there's a high point for today and then we'll hike down to jenny lakes right now brewer's biggest challenge was to find a vantage point to get a bird's eye view of the terrain in prior years, he was able to rely on reports from previous explorers, Indian trails and local knowledge. But this part of the Sierras was completely unknown. They had climbed lower local peaks that had provided some perspective, but gained little insight of a viable route through the mountains. Across the head of you, we can see the High Sierras for the first time. That's quite a vista. It's heading east. We're going down this valley and over that way, over to Jenny Lakes. Okay, so we're getting close. Obviously, reckons it's another 200 feet climb, maybe about a third of a mile, half a mile. Something like that. Yep. Well, and then I'll be ready for some lunch. We usually eat venison three times a day, but today the boy shot a large Arctic owl, an enormous fellow. They dressed and cooked him. This is the first time I've eaten it, and it's nothing to brag about. Strong, tough, with a rather mousy taste. A easy day wasn't that easy. <laughs> huh? it took us three hours to three? cover just five miles. Oh boy. Don't show this to, to our <laughs> YouTube audience. We're just getting into the zone, Elvis. Takes That's a few true. days. Takes this a few is days. the heaviest in terms of the backpack yeah. and our belly. Right, we're about... 48 pounds of gear, so I take some hauling up the mountain. Yeah. So here we are at our campsite. We've had a fabulous swim in this nice warm lake. We are in the middle of the lake and it's just as warm. Fun, okay. <laughs> How do you mean? What we had before that and most you can call it a thrill, okay? <laughs> but this is fun! <laughs> Give me more of these legs, okay? From now on. All right. And we've had a nap in the tent. And so we're all recharged and we're now going to go do a spot of fishing. And tonight it looks like we may even have a campfire. Oh, wow, that. some more firewood so tonight we get to enjoy campfire well it's six o'clock in the morning good morning elvis good morning how are you doing this morning uh it's okay not that great last night i think it was just excitement of yesterday perhaps this is certainly a very picturesque lake on this first thing in the morning seven o'clock Brewer and his team didn't know about Jenny Lake and so uh, they camped a couple of miles further further down uh, close to Jo Pass uh, with the benefit of maps and so on we decided that we would camp here rather than just in a just in a meadow as, as they did um, but now we're close to getting back onto the trail and we'll catch up with 
where they were. Oh, it's our second full day. We uh, have got up early to get off to a good start because we have a big, a big, big day today. Uh, let's just talk a little bit about this camp. You can see here we have fire pit. We have this most amazing granite countertop. Yeah. How, how level. That is amazing. He made cooking last night, absolutely. Piece of cake. And Richard want to carry this with him. <laughs> and the lake is like a mirror. Now, you saw our, how we swam in the lake yesterday, and it's... Uh, this lake yeah. will be remembered forever as a <laughs> swimmable lake. Okay, Elvis, so tell us about what, what's our plan today. Oh, today would be a big one. So we had our eight mile height, another 2,500 climb. So we're looking for a trail over to J.O. Pass. <coughs> this is where we are first heading. Climbing up out of Jenny Lakes over towards J.O. Pass. For the four years that Brewer led the, uh, the Whitney survey in the field, he wrote letters to his brother in New England and regularly posted these off. Every time they hit civilization, he would post off the next set of letters. And in these letters, Ruhr described in great detail pretty much every day of their expedition over those four years where we're following the latter part of 1864. Um, and Brewer was fastidious in his details. Every peak he measured the height of, every valley he measured the width of. Uh, it's full of detailed statistics. His brother saved these letters and after Brewer's death, they were passed on to Francis Farquhar, who was the, the head of the relatively new Sierra Club at that time. And he compiled them into a book. Which is, which is published, I think, in 1929, and it's called Up and Down California. And this book, all of the existing letters, there's a couple that are lost here or there, but as a result, it is the most amazing detailed description of what California looked like in the early 1860s. Not just this piece, but all of it, all through the coastline, Napa up to Shasta, over all the mountain passes north of Yosemite, and then finally in 1864, this foray into the wilderness where absolutely no one had been before in Kings Canyon and Sequoia. So the book is readily available, not only in uh, paperback form, but also now online. As Brewer's team neared the overlook of J.O. Pass, their quest for a bird's eye lookout over the Sierras was finally resolved. They saw a tall, distinctively shaped peak in the near distance. From the summit of that mountain, a path through the Sierras to the east hopefully could be identified, solving their navigation dilemma. Hey Elvis, that... Did you see bear? No. <laughs> It'd be nice if we did. That is Mount Silliman. Oh, that is the Mount Silliman? That is Mount Silliman. It's sh shape. Remember that sketch I showed you? It, it looks exactly the same. This is a sketch that Charles Hoffman made 158 years ago. And this is a and this is a view. Looks like this is the same tree. <laughs> so yeah. cool, huh? Yeah. It's history coming back to life.